and welcome, 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 welcome back to IFAS Basics. And we're in Module 10, and we are going to learn how to find information or find data uh, that and display it on a map. And we're searching for information in the IFAS because we've entered all this data, but we need to make some sense of it um, and view it on a map because, and sometimes spreadsheets work, but they're not always the best way to see things. And sometimes a visualization is always a good way to be able to see things in the IFAS. The IFAS has a real rudimentary mapping form in, within the application. It's not, there's not a lot of bells and whistles to it, but it's just enough if you need to get some quick information and just look at it on a map instead of having to find a GIS specialist uh, in order to get that information. And speaking of GIS specialists, uh, I am joined today by Jenny Sauer, and I am Rudy Rosselli. So Jenny's a GIS specialist, and it takes, you know, when I send her a, a, a request for a map, you know, I can send her an email on Monday, and she may not be able to get to it because everybody else wants a map, and what, it may be, what, Friday? Or maybe even, you know, you know, three days from now, five days from now. It just depends on her workload. And how and much I like you. So, exactly. <laughs> But you and I are good. You and yeah, I are yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. So we're looking for a map. And sometimes, again, we just need a quick picture on a map of what work and activities that we're doing. All right. So we're going to go ahead and log into the IFAS. Remember to take a quick look here in the upper right hand corner for your name and make sure that you're in the correct office in the upper right hand corner. And look down here on the system announcements just in case something's gone screwy with the application or they're working on it or they're updating it. So that way you know whether or not you should be working in the application. So that computer application sentence, we use that lexicon of words. And again, if you forget what those lexicon of words are, you can click in the description below and find that link for the lexicon of words. Jenny, is there something that people would look for specifically? What do you think that they would want to see on a map? Well, sometimes people want to just see the results for a whole year on a program. So like all the activities that are in a workbook for maybe like the past year, like 2020 for a program like EGBM, for instance. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So we're going to make that computer application sentence. And what we want to do is work with mapping. And so we would need to be able to work with mapping and we are going to find all the locations in a specific workbook and then we're going to go look for all the activities within the last year within that specific workbook okay so hmm denny where do you think we would go in order to create a map uh so that we can find all the locations we can filter for all the locations in a particular workbook where do you think we would go I want to see a map. So I'm looking along all these tabs and I see that there is a mapping tab. And I would start by selecting that tab and then it should turn green. And then there's this little show hide search filters button there at the left. I would probably use that. Exactly. And now we have all of our search filters for all the varying things that we may want to go searching for. In this case, we've got locations, sites, activities, samples, compliance agreement and compliance agreement inspections. We can view all of these different things on a map. It's a real basic type of map to show us what we're looking for. And we are looking for everything for a particular program. And in this case, it will be EGVM and in a particular workbook. This is why step two is so important. Step two of our steps, remember, when we're looking at our steps for creating data, step two is to create or review a workbook and assign that location. So if you assign your locations to a workbook, it makes it so much easier to extract data out of the IFAS for a particular workbook. In this case, we can find the workbook in here. Now, these are not, we are not limited to just these filters. There are a bunch of different filters. So we can display all the filters and use more and have more options for what we're looking for. But in this case, we're just looking for the locations in a particular workbook for the EGVM program. And what we're looking for is East Templeton for 2020. 
So we want to find all of the locations for that particular workbook. So once we do that, all we have to do is click on search and it will give us our result in here. Notice here that, the, that there's no map here. Well, one of the quirky parts about IFIS is that all you have to do is select any location and it will just click on it and it will display the map. So now we wanna hide our map, hide our search filters, and that location that I clicked on will show something, all right? So now this is the map of all the locations that we have here. And we can zoom out, and I'm gonna zoom out a long way so you can kind of see, you know, as you move further and further out, these all of these activities just end up being one little blob on the map, okay? So keep that in mind when you're looking at when you're looking at maps and you're looking at the varying activities that are in there, the closer you zoom down into it, the more detail that you're going to get for what you're looking for. Now here on the right hand side, got a few little what I call flashlights and you can see the flashlights here. And if you put your mouse over it, it'll say to expand. One of these is to display a legend. This is the legend of what these little dots mean. And we can see that we have here, we found sites and location, the green and the red. We have another little flashlight here that lets us turn on or off layers. So if I only wanted to see just locations, I can turn off the site layer. So now we know that we've got a limited number of sites or limited number of locations because we can have many sites associated with one location. So the so one to many re uh, relationship, when I turn back on the site layer by clicking on it, now we can see all of the varying sites that are there. Now, if I place my mouse over any one of these and I click, it will give me detail about that particular item. Now, in this case, I clicked on a location item. Now, when I look at this, if it doesn't look correct or something seems off, I can actually edit that location right from here. I don't have to get out. I don't have to go back all the way to the location tab, search for the location to make the change on the location. Nope, I can just click on it and make any changes that I might need to change and then click on save. And you can do the same thing with any site. So if I click on a site here, notice that's a green dot. This is a site, so I can edit the site. Click on that and then I can update any of the information on the site. We've answered the first part of our question, which is where are all the locations that are in a particular workbook for a particular program? Hmm, Jenny, have we answered all of our questions yet? How about the activities performed on those oh, sites? And that's right. So we need to be able to show or hide our search filters and work with activities for a specific date range. So how do you think we would do that, Jenny? What would be the best way to do that? Can we further filter by hitting the show hide search filters? There you go. And the, we're working with activities. So what would, where would we go next? We want that activities tab within the filters then. And you said that you wanted everything from last year. So we'll start with January. 2020 and we're going to search all the way through December 2020. Perfect. Hmm. Uh, is it perfect? Are we missing one thing? Yeah, I think you're going to get everything in all of in all of activities of all of APHIS. We want the workbook, the specific workbook. Correct. And for this case, we were looking at Templeton East for 2020. Again, this is why step two Creating the workbook is so important so that we can quickly filter things down. Remember, workbooks, all they are are custom lists. They're just a custom list to help you filter out information easier. And if we wanted to provide more detail, we can provide more detail by displaying all search filters. Once you go ahead and click on search, it will search through everything. Again, the quirky part, again, our map disappeared. So we need to make sure that we click on just one of the items on the list. And because we searched for locations already and we didn't clear out those results and we're searching for activities, we're going to see all of the activities as it's associated with each of the locations. And when we zoom out, now we can see, when you click on the map, you can click and drag it, click and hold and drag that map left and right. So let's display our legend here. And in our legend, we have 
Yellow are activities, green are site, red are locations. So we see that we have our activities here and we're, we want to know where that activity is. All we have to do is go ahead and click on that activity and it's going to show us what the activity is. And if we wanted more information on this, and we know the location is a state vineyard, but if we wanted to edit any more of this information or see more information, because not all of it is displayed, we can edit the activity and then we can see all the information associated with that activity all the way through it. Then all you have to do is click on save when you make your changes. Okay, and once your item has saved, then you should go, you'll take you right back to the map and then you can see all of the all of your results for your searches. This is how you are able to answer a question of the data so that you can see what you want to be able to see and lay it overlaid on a map. Now, unfortunately, we can't put any layers on it. There's not that capability. Again, it is just a really simple map uh, just for you to do, be able to display all the information that you would like to see on a map. Uh, maybe kind of working backwards a little bit in a different direction. How about can you okay. search for and view on the map all the places that an establishment might ship to? Okay. And that would be with compliance agreements, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, it would be with compliance agreements. So when we log when we log back into um, the IFAS, again, you're going to start off with that um, with that wonderful homepage. Uh, that's in the system. And remember, we're going to create a computer application sentence using the, our wonderful lexicon of words. Again, if you don't know what those words are, you can go and click on the link below and you can find that lexicon of words. We are working with maps. And what would, uh, what are we looking for, Jenny? I think your computer application sentence would be that you're working with mapping to filter mm -hmm. on compliance agreements. That's part of my thinking. So I'd go to that mapping uh -huh. tab across uh -huh. the top. I see that I'm on home because it's green and the mapping tab when I select it turns green. I'm going to uh -huh. want to show hide search filters and I'm looking for compliance agreements and there is a tab. Right. But we want to find all the locations because remember you wanted to find all the locations right. associated with an establishment. And in this case, we're looking for all the places that are receiving goods from a particular location. So in this case, we're gonna choose the workbook. Again, that's why the workbook is so important. It makes it easier to search for a smaller grouping of information. In this case, we're looking for all the receivers that come from Heinz. Now, hmm. We've got a small problem here. I clicked on search and I got no results. Is that, does that mean that there's no data in there, Jenny? It usually means there's a user error somewhere. Yeah, probably a user error. And the problem that we have if we display all of our search filters is that we want to know across the country mm -hmm. where all these receivers are. So do you think, where, where did we, where did I go wrong? Well, we have California selected as the state, so that's already ah, restricting us. Exactly. So we clear out the state, and now we can look at and see where all of the places that are associated with the Heinz establishment. So now we can do a search. We click on that search and look at that. And there remember, once it renders it, we have to go ahead and click on any one of the locations for it to come up. Let's go ahead and do more searches and we said we want to see all the shipments all the places not only just the places but which place had inspections for shipments so let's take a look at last year in 2020 and we're going to go from january and let's take this all the way through the end of the year this is all we need is just the start date and we want to be able to see it for all of the receivers for Heinz go ahead and search and this is all of the places across the country we have to zoom out here because we're looking nationwide notice here now we've got different kind different types of colors than what we had last time so let's take a look at our legend our legend here we have locations and we have compliance uh, agreement inspections let's do one more search here for compliance agreements
as well. So when we hide our search filters, we can see as we zoom out. Now we've got pretty pictures. Okay, so across the nation, when we take a look at our legend here, we can see the colors represented are locations, compliance agreements, and compliance agreement inspections. And this is from Heinz, uh, from the Heinz establishment in California. These are all the varying places that they ship, make shipments to, and where we can see the varying inspections. And we can turn off the various layers for whichever we want. If we want to turn off the uh, compliance agreements, we can turn those off. We want to turn off the locations, we can turn those off. And now we're just spec left with the compliance agreement inspections. To bring back the compliance agreement inspection layer, turn off our com compliance agreement layer and turn off compliance agreement inspections. These are all the places that has a compliance agreement associated with the Heinz establishment. This is how easy it is to be able to see information within um, within the IFAS uh, on a map so that we can track where shipments go. That's how easy it is to be able to see things on a map within the IFAS. Um, we looked at a, we answered the question for where uh, all the activity for a particular workbook in the IFAS and displaying it on a map. And we also were able to look at all the establishments that are an associated compliance agreement with an establishment here in California that shipped out across the country and all of the varying inspections that went along with it. And that brings us to the end of this module and we'll see you later. Bye.